So today, we want to teach you how to make what's obviously a very traditional Chinese dish, deep-fried pineapple pizza baozi. Now, I'm just going to be upfront here. Originally, this video was just supposed to be kind of a joke. You know, look at the date and April Fool's sort of situation. But the specific combination of textures and flavors that these chewy, cheesy bounces delivered on actually ended up being good. Like, shockingly good. So much so that, honestly, we had to throw our original idea out the window. You see, there's this urban legend within China that you can bump into now and then that in addition to the apocryphal noodles, apparently pizza was also one of those Marco Polo-derived culinary concoctions. The story tends to go something along the lines that Marco Polo tried to learn how to make baozi when he was in China, but unfortunately couldn't really figure out how to properly wrap the thing. So upon returning to Italy, he decided, screw it, for went the whole wrapping bit, and with that, the story goes, pizza was born. It's one of those legends that are so obviously absurd, I mean, flatbreads globally are about as old as agriculture is, that it is kind of fun. So our original idea for this video was to really lean into it, really try to trigger the whole country of Italy. Working title, how China invented pizza, and Italy screwed it up. You know, some good old-fashioned rage clickbait potential there. But because we're us, we also ended up crafting this whole sort of elaborate historical con world to fill in some of the obvious blanks of the story, complete with entire fake etymologies. Like, our idea to explain away the pineapple bit was that it was the product of Matteo Ricci's travels in China, that from his start in Guangdong, he misunderstood what a Cantonese pineapple bun was, and brought instead some of the subtropical fruit up with him up to Beijing as a present for the court, where then, of course, Ricci's pineapple pizza baozi became a proper delicacy. It was all pretty fun, but in the end, we just couldn't bring ourselves to do this to deep-fried pineapple pizza bao. Because, whatever with 4-1, the thing is actually unironically good, and we do want you to at least think about giving it a fair whirl. That said, I do know that we've got some explaining to do, though, so here's why it works. See, a steamed pizza baozi in and of itself is also a pretty solid snack. Like, there's this company called Baozi in Beijing that manufactures some, and they've got a niche sort of following within China. Deep frying that steamed pizza baozi, though, in our opinion, really amps things up texturally. It's less that it makes things crisp, but more that it dries out the surface of the bao to make things chewier landing on something almost a bit reminiscent of a bagel crust. To my taste, though, whenever I've had deep-fried baozi in the past, they've always felt a touch on the rich side, though, and that's where we think the addition of pineapple really shines. It cuts through the richness, so the whole thing ends up tasting pretty balanced. It probably wouldn't grace a Michelin restaurant menu anytime soon, but in the context of something like a street snack or maybe a bar food would totally be a hit we think. So, we'll obviously need to get things started here by whipping up some baozi dough. To make it, to 200 grams of all-purpose flour, first just toss in 2 grams of salt, 8 grams of sugar on one side of the bowl, 2 grams of instant yeast on the other side of the bowl, and 80 grams of milk. The milk actually being a sort of Cantonese dim sum restaurant trick for softer baozi. So, roughly mix that milk in with the sugar, then go in with 28 grams of water, mixing that with the yeast on the other side. Then, once that's combined, mix it all together with a chopstick, and once things are looking good and shaggy, knead it in the bowl for about a minute or two to get it into a rough ball, then transfer onto your work surface. Now, we'll be kneading this guy for about five to six minutes, but you'll want to do so by continuously smearing the dough against your work surface, rolling it all up, and then repeating. This move helps develop the gluten more efficiently. So then after that time, roll it back up and shape it into a rough ball. You should be looking at something a bit like this, relatively smooth, but a little pockmarked still is completely fine for this dough. Then just pinch close that seam, slap the thing seam side down onto your work surface and twist to smooth that out. Then just toss it in a bowl and let it ferment until it's doubled in size. And for us in a tropical climate, at least, to get to that point takes us about one hour. So at this point, we can then portion this all out. 
Today, we're planning on eight pizza bows in all. So punch a hole in the center of that and first form it into sort of a jumbo Montreal bagel-shaped ring. Then break it, rip it in half, and in half again. This approach is a traditional way of evenly portioning out bouts of wrappers. But because we do also have a scale, we can further refine that into 40 gram pieces exactly. Then, now just shape those into smooth balls by first flattening it, pulling the edges to the center, and then squeezing that mushy side closed, then rolling the remaining seam against your work surface to close it up. No need to be too paranoid with this move. Once you get the hang of it, you can even sort two at a time. Then just cover that all up and let it rest for 15 minutes to let the gluten relax. Then, after that time, it's time to roll those balls into proper wrappers. To do so, first just flatten that with your hand, then grab a rolling pin and continuously gently roll in and then press out. This motion is a common move for both dumplings and bowdzes, as it causes the center to get ever so slightly thicker than the edges. That faintly thicker center useful to hold up all your fillings, while the thinner edge allows for better pleating. Of course, you won't end up with an obvious thick center or anything. Trust that the motion itself will do your work for you. In the end, you'll want a wrapper that's about 12 centimeters in diameter. So just work through all those, and then now let's talk fillings. So right, again, originally our whole idea for this video was that sort of fake pizza bow history, which meant that we needed to explain away the whole tomato sauce bit. So our idea was to base things off of a reasonably common noodle topping from the northwest of China called stewed tomato and eggs, leaving out the eggs and thickening things so that it wouldn't make a mess out of a bouts of filling. So definitely do feel free to just use western style tomato sauce here instead, but this one also ended up working pretty well. Either way, to make it, first just grab one large tomato, sort of skewer it with a chopstick, and then grill that over a medium flame. The purpose here is just to de-skin the thing, so you could also go for that tried and true boiling method instead if that's what you like, we just find this way a bit easier. So then, just cut out the core, remove the seeds, and then finally dice up the remainder. Now then, tomato sorted to a pot over a medium flame, first toss in one tablespoon of oil, then go in with a large clove's worth of minced garlic. Fry that until it's fragrant, about one minute, then go in with the minced tomato. Give that a mix, and once it's released a touch of its moisture, after about another minute, toss in a half tablespoon of Liaojiu aka Shaoxing wine, together with another half tablespoon of soy sauce. Mix, then also toss in a quarter teaspoon salt and a quarter teaspoon of sugar. Now just let that reduce down for about three or four minutes, or until there's not much obvious liquid remaining. Then go in with an eighth teaspoon MSG, and then thicken things up with a slurry of a half teaspoon cornstarch mixed with a half tablespoon of water. At this point, you should be looking at something about this consistency. So finish with a good sprinkle of white pepper powder and a quarter teaspoon toasted sesame oil. Mix, remove, and set aside. Then, for our cheese, what we'll be using today is a low moisture mozzarella, slicing out about a one centimeter cube for each baozi. But because we do also have some stretchy, gooey YouTube thumbnails to make, We'll also be combining that with two parts of a cheapo processed shredded kind of maz, which always tends to really nail that visual effect. It's just the cost of doing business. Obviously using 100% real cheese would be the most delicious and our recommendation if applicable. So now with those sorted, we can finally wrap up some bounza. So then to your wrapper, first just add in one teaspoon of your tomato sauce, about a tablespoon of the meme cheese, a cube of the real cheese, one tablespoon of diced ham, and a tablespoon of diced pineapple. Then, to wrap, just go around and pleat the baozi while ever so gently pressing the filling down inside. Once you're at the end, just pinch everything closed, and if you've got a little extra dough, just fold it over and pinch a new little top for the bao. And then, with that, you've got yourself a baozi. That said, for half of these though, we did want to change up the filling slightly. You see, while I do think that the internet's probably beaten this whole pineapple pizza horse to death by this point, it's also never really been my personal order either. To my taste buds at least, the pineapple always felt like it kind of clashed with the tomato sauce, just like there was too much going on. It's not inedible or anything, 
But for the remainder, we decided to take some inspiration from Japanese bakeries and swap for Kewpie mayo instead, also about one teaspoon. Either way, just continue working through all your baozi, tossing each into your bamboo steamer. Then, for our final proof, we'll be doing this over water, 35 centigrade preferably, for 15 minutes in all. Of course, climate can be a variable here, so just proof it until the dough is able to slowly bounce back in this manner if you poked it in with your finger. So then, to steam that, now just get a pot of water up to a rapid boil, toss your bamboo steamer on, then lower your flame down to medium high and steam that for eight minutes. Then, after that time, just shut off the heat and leave the bounds there for one to two minutes to avoid any rapid temperature changes. And then after that, just remove and now we've got ourselves some steamed pizza baozi. And again, at this point, these are pretty solid. A tasty enough snack for sure. But to me, it always felt a little texturally one note. Like, the cool thing about pizza is the contrast between the crust, the chewy dough, and of course the cheese. And these felt closer to like a savory naihuang bao or something like that. We tried pan frying them, we even tried roasting them in the Xinjiang style. But in the end, it was actually deep frying, which isn't really a common baozi technique, but you do see here or there. That really, really worked. But before I scare you off, trust that you don't need too much oil here. Shallow frying will also be perfectly good. Minimum, I'd guess maybe about two inches of oil or enough to almost submerge your baozi. So once your now steamed baozi have cooled down to the touch, just heat said oil up to 185 centigrade, drop the baozi in top side down, and let it brown for about 35 to 40 seconds. Then flip and fry that on the other side for the same 35 to 40 seconds or until everything's evenly golden brown. Then just work through all of your baozi, transferring them over to a paper towel line plate as you go, just skipping over any bao that had any obvious leakage. And then just like that, you've got yourself some deep fried pineapple pizza baozi to thoroughly impress all your Italian friends. So, Pineapple pizza in a baozi. I already know what the comment section is gonna be like. But before you pour your criticism onto this video, I do hope that maybe you can give it a try and think about specific reasons why you don't like it if you don't like it. After all, those kind of mashups are happening all the time in Asia, be it Japanese bakery, Hong Kong Chao Chan Tang, or Thailand cook shops. And they're fun. And they are some of our favorite places to eat after all. So I think in the spirit of this kind of dishes, it's more important to know the fundamental techniques and then just have fun with it. So right, check out the recipe in the description box. A big thank you for everyone that's supporting us on Patreon. And of course, subscribe for more Chinese cooking videos.